the countdown timer ended. Sorry, I wasn't there. I was talking to TikTok. Hey, Twitch. How's it going? We're still talking to TikTok and we're talking to Twitch. So if you see me look over here, I might say hi to TikTok every once in a while. And if I'm looking over here, that's because we're looking at what we're doing today. So <clears throat> if you're just joining us, hi. And big click energy I recently went to San Diego comic-con and it was my second year it was a good year um, you know once you've done it once or twice for anybody who hasn't gone and wants to go first of all good luck it's really hard to get into uh, I've heard from some people they've tried to get tickets for like 10 years in a row and could never get them and then finally on the this last year they got them. Like I, I, I met someone who told me that tale this year and I was just floored. I was like, wow, really? 10 years? It took you 10 years to get into Comic-Con. Holy moly. My only experience with um, any kind of Comic-Con is my local home state con, which is uh, used to be Phoenix Comic-Con and now it's <sighs> Phoenix Fan Fusion, which I, it's a name, isn't it? Um, I call it Phoenix Con Fusion because a lot of people still call it Comic-Con and some people call it Fan Fusion. And so, just confusion. It's confusing, right? It's fun. Um, but that's been my own only experience. And it's like a piddly little, I mean, it's not a little bitty, but it's like little compared to San Diego or NYCC or one of those kinds of conventions. It's, it's what we average. I think the most we've ever done is like 60,000, 70,000. I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not fresh on the numbers. Those are pre-COVID numbers, which I'm pretty sure our convention probably peaked uh, pre-COVID. I don't, I don't know if we've had such, stro such strong numbers since. I'm not sure. But um, the last few years there were, were good. My home con, unfortunately, has um, got a new rule. They want to ban photographers, so I may not be going back to my home con. But um, thankfully, SDCC, who's been in convention for, uh, you know, it's the oldest one. It's the first one. Thankfully, they haven't had any bright ideas like banning photographers so um, I can still go there and take photos and it's been lovely I had a I got I have a friend acquaintance really an acquaintance a professional acquaintance who um, does panels at SDCC and they uh, have access to like some spare badges if they have it's like nothing's guaranteed until you're there and it's in your hand but um, yeah, that's how I got in, but I, you know, it's a trade. I had to take photos of their stuff and, you know, it's, it's, nothing's free, right? But, but it was fun. That's, that's how I got in and that's how I got to do my thing. So today, if you're on my twitch.tv slash big click energy, also it's big underscore click underscore energy. I just go to Twitch and type in big click energy. I'm sure I'll pop up. But, um, also big click photo.com slash links is, uh, where you can find all my links. I was hoping to get my chat sorted today in my Streamlabs, but something's weird about it and I can't quite figure it out, so that's more troubleshooting I have to do. Anyway, I may not be able to drop you a direct link in chat is what I'm saying, but if you're here and you're watching, hi, welcome. Let's get into it. So, last time we were here, uh, we were looking at, oh this is some family stuff I was looking at. Um, last time we were here we were looking at my... Comic-Con stuff, right? And I started to tag and flag the things that I might potentially want to edit. So, yeah, so I started with, I want to start with, obviously, friends. So, this Wolverine here is a friend of mine. He also came back, I mean, he was there every day, but he also did other cosplays. But I want to focus on his Wolverine first, because this helmet was new, and I really love the helmet. I want to edit one of these, you know, fantastically. Um, there's a lot in here that I want to eventually edit. This is going to take months, but hey, content. We got plenty to stream. We got plenty to look at, plenty to do. Um, what else we got? Oh my gosh. This, I don't know how the, I would edit this, but it's cool. I also want to focus on this one. We're going to look at some inspiration for, uh, Spider-Man 2099 today. Um, because I've never gotten my hands on a cosplayer who does Spider-Man 2099 like I've never just I've never seen one I always just see you know the stereotypical Spider-Man or maybe like the odd superior Spider-Man or something like that or like a, the Spider-Punk I've seen lots of those those are fantastic um, but I've never seen a 2099 so I guess I just haven't been to the right places at the right time but I finally got one this year and they're actually a local who I never met locally but of course I meet them at SDCC it's wild 
<coughs> that's usually how it goes. A lot of local cosplayers I've met uh, at other conventions. So yeah, I've gone through and I've marked quite a few of these that I definitely want to edit. Here's another friend. He does uh, amazing prop making. He does some really cool stuff with 3D printing. He actually has, uh, well, he owns his own toy company, H. Oh, I'm gonna get it wrong. HTC Toys. It's a, it's actually a Transformers reference. The whole name of his business. Forgive me for getting it wrong. HTB Toys. HTB Toys. Maybe I don't know. Anyway, he has a toy company, and he makes these little mini uh, 3D resin printed, not just regular plastic 3D printing, but resin printed. Um, <clears throat> he's got like so many points of articulation in these toys. It's it's crazy. He actually has his own um, formula for the resin that's like uh, under wraps or something. <laughs> um, he'll he'll show you how to make like cool toys and stuff, but he won't exactly give you a secret recipe. Uh, but he makes some really great props and stuff, and he made this oversized um, Harley Quinn slugger bat, I guess, for lack of a better word, but he, he decked it out, and it's very cool. It's a very interesting prop. He's, he's made all kinds of cool stuff. <clears throat> he actually gave me, it's in the other room, um, he had a mess up, you know, because you make things, you make mistakes, right? These 3D printers don't always get it right, you don't always get it right. And... Um, he had miscalculated the proportions for his own skull, I guess, and uh, tried to make a Ghost Rider helmet, bucket, skull situation, 3D printed, and it, the first one was way too big. <laughs> like, it was, it made you look like a bobblehead when you put it on. It was, like, cartoonishly large. It was great. Um, but he eventually redid it and turned out... I, think the size was right eventually but he gave me he was like do you want this big bobblehead one I'm just gonna throw it in the recycling and I was like yeah no I'll, I'll I love skulls I'll collect them I'll put it up somewhere on a shelf and that's exactly where it is it's somewhere on a shelf yeah he makes cool stuff cool stuff and he does fun cosplays also I, I love this poison heavy I gotta look up some art for that so, what I want to do right now, since I have some things picked out and I know what I want to do, well, I don't know exactly what I want to do. I know which ones I want to potentially edit. That's where I am. And I'm taking you on the entire journey. So, not we're not just looking at me editing, which is the fun stuff. That's the meat and potatoes. But the lead up, there's a lot more work to, than just that. Like, when I actually start editing, I can knock out these photos. Like, I can do one in 20 minutes, one in an hour, one in a few hours. It depends on what kind of editing and art that I'm trying to make for each one, because each one is different. Um, but uh, right now, like, days, there's days and hours spent that lead up to the fun part, the editing, the, the part where I actually get to work and create something, where it's just like, I have to get inspired. Like, I can look at this photo, and I know I want to edit it, and I have a, like, I know the character, I know Poison Ivy, I'm, fr I'm familiar, and I just, I don't know exactly what I want to do. You know? Do I want to put vines around it? Or do I want to put her in like a pretty plant? Probably. Probably put her in like a pretty viney, planty situation. And keep in mind, I'm not a traditional artist in the sense where I pin on pad, right? Like, I can draw. Um, I used to draw a lot in high school and stuff. I can paint, I can sculpt, I can do all the things. I just prefer photography. Um, but I don't do a pad. I tried to use a Wacom tablet, Wacom, whatever, however you say it. I say Wacom because it's fun. But I tried to use one of those and like the disconnect for my brain is just way too big. I can't, I don't, I don't, I can't. I tried. <laughs> yeah, I, I just can't. Um, and my friends were like, oh, just give it time, give it time. I gave it six months. I just, I can't do the tablet. Uh, so I like, I can paint and stuff and I do it with my hand with this mouse with a rock. So, um, but I'll mostly composite, so I'll just find different elements, um, create different elements, vectors, uh, just different things. I'll just combine stuff and make my own background. Sometimes drawing, sometimes just compositing, where you like blend two things together to create a new element. <coughs> Excuse me. Water. That's why we got the water. So now I'm going to go try to find inspiration.
So the next step, the first step on the process was go to the thing, go to the gig, take photos. This, most of these photos, I think 80, 90% of these were shot in one day on Saturday, just on the back mezzanine. There are so many cosplayers and so much going on at SDCC, you cannot possibly see everything and everyone in one day. So I take my camera for multiple, last year taught me, leave the camera at the hotel for a couple of days, enjoy yourself, do your shopping, check out the exhibitor hall floor, and then Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, if you're still feeling up to it, take your camera, <clears throat> because that's when all the cosplayers are going to be out, fully decked, you know, fully decked out. So, most of these were shot, <clears throat> come on voice, most of these were shot on Saturday, just on the back mezzanine, and that's um, the big grand staircase out side on the back of the convention center where a lot of cosplay groups will do their group photos and stuff like that so like for example last year I shot the Mando group um, actually didn't get to it this year because I was doing other groups but the Star Wars group alone uh, that gathers back there is like 300 people strong I think like they fill up the whole damn staircase and it's a big staircase <laughs> so yeah, like, it's fun. I just mostly, most photographers will just grab a couple of the group shots, you know, help them take their group photos, and then, um, that's a good way to just, like, meet people and walk around and just mingle with them, and I, I call it poaching. I'll pick them out. I'll pick them out of the crowd and be like, ooh, I like that one. Ooh, I want to edit that one. Oh, that one's a really good one. Like, you know, and I'll just walk up and be like, hi, can I take your photo? And usually have my business card. I actually ran out of business cards at this convention, like I usually do. I usually I take like a hundred cards, 150 cards with me and I run out. And that's, um, hopefully people hang on to them. They've got little QR codes, they're really easy to just boop. And on the back of each card, I have a different background on each card. It's a different photo that I've taken or art that I've made. So they're, they've kind of become trading cards for some people. I have some, I've had people come up to me twice and be like, can I, oh, can I, actually, can I get this one? I really like that. And I'm like, yeah, sure, that's cool. But anyway, so first step, shoot. Second step, come home. Decompress. <laughs> Finally get to sorting, sifting, um, doing your basic cropping color correction, which I don't think I've done. I've done some cropping. I haven't done much color correction. But just sort, sift, see which ones you, you know, strike your fancy, which ones you want to edit. And then I go online. <clears throat> And this is where it just like eats up a lot of my time. I'll I'll get inspired. I'll look at other people's art and see how these characters have been portrayed in other ways. And then um, I'll think about it for a little while. And then I'll go and start creating my own backgrounds. And I'll do a little bit of that offline so that you don't have to trudge through every single thing with me because that is really time consuming. But um, next time I come on to stream, hopefully I'll have some of these backgrounds created and we can start editing the photo into the background and creating the final piece. So, yeah, good stuff. And if you missed this live stream, no worries, say hey to VOD gang because we put it on YouTube. At least I try to in a timely manner. The last stream I did was July 31st and it got on YouTube today because <laughs> um, <clears throat> had kind of a kind of a hard week this week. Kind of some uh, personal stuff going on. Kind of had a kind of had a loss in the family, I guess, to put it gently. Somebody I love very dearly died, but um, yeah, just <laughs> just power right through that. We're dealing with it, you know, I'm coping. But, um, still got work to do, so. Let's see. Let's, the first thing I want to look at is Wolverine. I've got a few pulled up here. I want to get inspired for the Wolverine. I want to be inspired for Spider-Man 2099. I want to be inspired for Poison Ivy. And Harley Quinn, and maybe we'll get to Spider-Gwen. Um... And there's more. I'm going to have to do a lot more. But these are the first few that I'm probably going to end up editing. Uh, these characters. So keep an eye out for that. And as I edit these, um, I probably won't release them the same day like to Instagram or my website. What I usually do is once I have enough to start releasing, because I release in sets. And I make grid posts. And I, my, my Instagram feed is 
very well organized, I guess. I don't know. Um, big click energy on everything. If you want to see my Instagram and see what I'm talking about, big click energy. Um, I think it's big click energy one, the number one on the end of it. But just look for my logo. My logo is the same everywhere. Um, anyway. I do grid posts and stuff like that, so I need to be able to release one, two, three, four images in a set that, like, that's a week. Like, that's a Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday release, and I try to release them on the same days. Um, so I try to just, like, get up, um, like, just gather and, and hoard a bunch of finished work and then pff, just start, because then I don't have any cosplay. So, like, I... I, I I'll get cosplay shoots here and there from locals when the weather's cool, but I live in the desert, and right now is not cosplay season, so um, all of this content is going to feed us <laughs> through September, October, probably. It'll take me that long to get through all of this and, you know, give each one the attention it deserves and do it properly. I've already had people from SDCC follow me and say, hey, is my photo ready? And I'm like, ha, ah, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's... Um, it's not, it's, if it was paid work and we, like, had a contract and I had a little bit of a tougher deadline, yeah, I, I'm strict with myself on deadlines and I'll get things done lickety split, but, um, this is free and fun and we're just working on it until they're done and I work on them as they come to me and as I'm inspired, so it's no rush, it's no worries, I'm not pressed and I'm not stressing myself out to get anything done, like, today, you know what I mean? So taking it slow and that's what I found over the years it's not worth stressing yourself out over this stuff just especially if it's free especially if you're not paid for it if somebody wants to pay for their finished work and get my watermark removed we can talk about that send me an email or a message or a d well you know slide into my dms that's fine but um yeah right now we're just we're just checking things out we're gonna get inspired so let's look back at what we have of this wolverine because what helps me is looking at the poses I want to... Okay, so I have these flagged. Just these two. Okay. I bet I might edit one of these as well. Ooh, which one do I like? Hmm. I think I like that one. So, we're looking at poses. Looking at poses, looking at the vibe. Alright. Okay. And then now I'm now I'm thinking about like what kind of settings has Wolverine been put in. And I like abstract stuff too, like you know, I can put you in a realistic setting where it really looks like you're standing on top of, like I put Spider Man it looked like he was hanging onto the you know, gripped onto the side of a skyscraper. I've done that. I can do that. I can make it look like you're in a real environment, but I can also have a little fun and just make it look like some you know, paint splatter or something. I did that with Deadpool, actually. I just put like a red-black gradient and some blood splatter and then Deadpool, that was it. Simple. He didn't need a big, heavy, deep environment, you know? So Wolverine's just shiny yellow. <laughs> and I also don't want to repeat myself. So, for example, pretty sure I shot this person because we're friends and I shot him last year and I edited one shot of him as Wolverine and I want to be careful not to repeat that and I don't remember exactly how that looked so let's look at that real quick uh, I've recently updated the portfolio so if you go in you can see all the latest cosplay stuff that I've been working on and uploading to Instagram everything always hits Instagram first TikTok and Twitch see it first and then Instagram really gets like the hard copy and then my website eventually gets updated so that people can always see it there as a part of my portfolio so yeah, I want to make sure I don't repeat myself so let's scroll through this pretty quick here I don't want to waste too much time and look for this Wolverine uh, da -da 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 -da. I know I shot him I know I edited one. Oh, there's spider punk oh there it is yeah okay I see what I did that's fun that's abstract Okay. I'll definitely want to do something with the X again, but I want to be careful not to do the same kind of background. You know what I mean? Let's make it less blue heavy, right? And maybe not this exact, you know, it won't be exact. 
definitely don't want to repeat myself. So we'll keep that open. We'll just bring it back here. That way if we need to refer to anything, we can. Where was I? Wolverine. So, hmm. I should have good posture. My posture's poor. Good posture. There we go. And water, right? Hmm. This one's fun. Can you see that, chat? Oh, you're blocking it, chat. Get the hell out of the way. No, that looks, that's cool. That's fun. That's interesting. Hmm. I think I like I think I like the abstract stuff like simple but effective Ooh, yeah definitely with a hint of an X I like that I like that that's cool so I would never like directly rip off anyone's work obviously I mean you can put all of my stuff through uh, what is it reverse image or whatever I've done that actually I've put my finished work before I publish it through a reverse image search Just to make sure it's not too much like anybody else's fan art and so far I've, I've been good I haven't accidentally made anything that's just like somebody else's, but I'm definitely inspired um, Just to see what people have done with the character See things I like see things I don't like You know a lot of these are showing me things that I definitely don't want to do and some of these things are showing me things that I do want to do that's fun. Oh, he's got the cigar, doesn't he? Yeah. Hmm. Oh, I wish I would have had a Logan and a Deadpool together. That would have... Especially right now, that would have made a great duo. Damn. There was a Deadpool roaming around, too, if I could have just found them together at the right place in the right time. Hmm. Yeah, a lot of yellow, a lot of black, a lot of shiny. Definitely got to put shine on the claws. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's a lot of sitting and going, mm-hmm, yes, yes, mm-hmm. All right, so that's Wolverine. And sometimes I'll take notes, too, and, uh, or... If I've done this character before, you know what? I bet if I'm bright enough, I kept a kept a folder of it on hand. Let's see, cosplay. I have a folder called Edit Assets, and I got a whole folder inside of that folder called Cosplay Assets. And if I ever did, yep, I did X Men before. All right, so I have I have I have things for potential backgrounds here already. Things like that I had in mind, elements that I've found and put together. Oh, I've done a gambit, apparently. Fun. Cool, cool, cool. Okay. That's good news. Now, let's take a look at this. I'm feeling sufficiently inspired for the Wolverine, so I'm going to set that aside, put that on a shelf, and keep it open, though, just in case I need to refer, because I will consistently refer to things, just to make sure I'm doing the character justice. Because, like, I, I get lucky when I go to Comic-Con, usually I can just pick out characters that I love, personally, from different comic books and movies and things. And um, there's usually enough cosplayers that they've covered, you know, every fan base is covered. Uh, but every once in a while, people will hire me, and then I, you know, can't pick what I'm shooting. And, like, I'll get, um, which is fine, I love challenges, but uh, this year I got hired to shoot a... Naruto character, uh, Madura Ucha, Uchi, Uchiha, Uchiha, something like that. I also got hired to do a Bleach character from the anime Bleach, and there's another, oh, I'm familiar with Zelda, um, played the games, longtime fan, but I never shot and edited a Link. I've shot and edited a Zelda, but never a Link, so that was a fun new challenge. Um, and yeah so sometimes i don't always get to pick but um this year I, I got lucky there's a lot of great cosplays at san diego and it was like i was in heaven so this is these are fully masked okay i did not get a fully masked 2099 peter parker but or spider-man but um 
I know it's very cyberpunk, right? Like, I read some of these comics. The vibe is future. Shiny. Action. Okay. Maybe put the spider, spider symbol in the background. I did a spider punk last year. And I think I put the the Spider-Verse spray paint like Mal Morales spider symbol. Yeah, I like to do that just to draw it all back. You can't even see it. Yeah, it's back there. The legs are back there. You get the idea. Yeah, I'll definitely probably do something with that. I, I'm also going to edit more than one of these because I took a lot of photos of the 2099 cosplay. Kind of gave them their own little mini shoot while we were there. And I was like, yeah, yeah I'll, I'll edit a lot of these. Not all, but some. So I want to try to get that one done first. Or at least right after my Wolverine. So I, I'm imagining the first two I will be done with and releasing will be Wolverine and the Spider-Man 2099. This is cool. I like that. Oh, shoot. Have lasers. Ooh. Hmm. I think just make it bright, make it shiny, make it cool. Yes. This is. Yep. Oh God, yes. Something like that. That is freaking awesome. I just love cyberpunk stuff. Synthwave, vaporwave, whatever you want to call it. I know those are different things, but. Sometimes people confuse them. Oh, I can put in the spider sense tingly thing. Oh, that gives me an idea. See, that gives me an idea. I can edit that in. That's fun. Those are just little squiggles. Oh, that's fun. Okay, I'm going to start taking notes. That's good stuff. Yeah, I got some ideas. We're getting ideas. We're getting them. Oh, hey. Welcome. How's it going? Thanks for tuning in. Hey, TikTok. How are you? You holding up? Doing good? Are you bored? I know. I'm not going gang gang. Or whatever. Would I get stuff if I do that? Do I get stuff? Do I get a thing? Do I get a... Somebody throw me a flower. No? Okay. <clears throat> No, we're just doing work. We're just <laughs> making art. It's no big deal. It's fine. This one's cool. It's drawn, but I just like the vibe of it. Feeling kind of abstract, I guess. These might be some abstract edits. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. It's just X. Thank you. But I like the uh, inspiration of the little spider sense tingly things. The little squiggles over his head. That's cute. I want to do that. I think I might add that to an edit. I'm going to leave this page right here so I see those. So next, let's try to get inspired by Poison Ivy. Hmm? Definitely plants. Yeah, yeah, plant heavy. That's gorgeous. That's beautiful. Yeah, I think I want to put like... Wow, that's awesome. Art. Um, I think I want to put like uh, plants vines this vibe but more fantastical beautiful graceful if that makes any sense probably not I'm trying to find an example that's the thing usually I'm, I get inspired by the stuff and then it's like I have such a different idea that I can't find examples and I just have to go make it and that's fine that's what that's the point <laughs> but it's like I just want to try to visualize I'm I'm I have a hard time visualizing sometimes. So it helps to look at what other people have made and get inspired by their stuff. Oh, that's the same one I already saw. Ooh. Yeah. Sort of. That's that's the idea. I like that. Ooh. Yeah, actually. Monster plants perhaps. Yeah. Not just any old vines. See this is this is pretty. Oh, that's lovely. 
Just ivy. Just putting a, a wall of ivy behind her. I'm sure there's stock photos of ivy out there. I've taken photos of ivy walls. That's another thing. If, um, since I do composite work, I will go out and take my own images if I can't find one in the public domain. Just be like, oh, well, there's not of that photo I need. Let's go make it so I can use it as an element in this other thing that I'm making. That's why some of these can take a long time to create, because I don't want to steal anybody's artwork and use it in my own, and I don't want to uh, repeat or make like the same thing, you know, or that kind of thing. So I, I make sure I use elements that, you know, only I have, no one else has, or whatever. But the elements that I do create, like if I take stock photography for these kinds of projects, I will put that out in the public domain after I've released my project so that other people can use that stuff. But like while the dinner's getting cooked, you know, don't, don't give away all the ingredients. <clears throat> yeah, I'm feeling a lot of green. Ooh, glowy, glowy green glowy and green. That is an idea. That gives me ideas. That tingles, that tickles my brain. Hmm. Mm hmm Glowy, green, ivy. Ooh. You know, I have dabbled with doing names. Um, a few, was it last year? I got to go to a little bitty convention uh, called Game On Expo. I think I'm going again this year. Um, but I got to shoot a few cosplayers, and it was it's game, right? Gaming. Game On. And so all the cosplayers there are very gaming centric. So there was like a Halo group, um, a Fallout group, uh, mm -hmm. Princess Peach, Mario, Bowser, that kind of thing. And I shot the Halo guys, and I shot the Fallout guy. Oh, there was a, a Umbrella Corps off a uh, soldier from Resident Evil. And there's like a whole Resident Evil group out here. Like all the cosplayers have their own little clubs and stuff. Um, and I took their photo, and in the edits I put the names of the game, I think? Something like that. It's in here, isn't it? Where did I put those guys? Where do those guys live? <laughs> There's a Princess Peach. No, they're not that far down. I think I did that, didn't I? Yeah, I started getting into like putting names on stuff. There it is. Umbrella Core. So, that's... And the Fallout logo, which I just straight up like, just put the Fallout logo on there. So that's an idea. I'm definitely oh, like I'm open or down to putting like a cool spin on it with like graphic design, putting their name on there. Makes it look more like a like a poster, like you know, like fan art. And I think it's cool when cosplayers get to see like their cosplay put into that environment, you know, where they can only imagine themselves to be. I want to make it a reality, if I can. I don't think my art's very good. I personally think it's crap, but I'm my own worst critic, like every artist. So, um, people keep hiring me, though, and asking me to do stuff for them. So we're doing it. Yeah. I like the ideas I've gotten for this. I like this. I meant to leave this one alone, didn't I? But that's fine. Poison Ivy. I think we're good on that. I think I have some pretty good ideas there. Yeah. There's been a lot of great fan art made of Poison Ivy over the years. Wow. I'm just scratching the surface. I also don't usually use Google. I just pulled it up quickly today for the sake of the stream and for saving time. But there's a vast variety of image search engines that I'll use to find art. Deviant, I'll go to Deviant, look around, you know, things like that. Creative Commons, open source stuff. Pretty much everywhere. Hmm. How long have we been streaming, chat? Oh damn, almost an hour. Wow, good. Gotta keep that link. Now we're getting Harley Quinn inspired red and black. Classic Harley Quinn, not this pink and blue bubblegum crap. We're looking at classic Harley. Nothing wrong with the new Harley. Uh, 
they're okay, there might be some things wrong with the new Harley, but <laughs> I don't mind her. Um, I just prefer the classic, I love the classic Harlequin cra like clown with the, you know, just the classic. So that's what I'm looking at here. Maybe I should type in classic because it's going to mix in a lot of that new Harley Quinn with, with it. I didn't actually see the, the year that that Harley Quinn character came out and was debuted and like the few years surrounding it, I saw a lot of those cosplays. Like they were just, there were just Harley Quinns as far as the eye could see. They were like, there were swarms of them at Comic-Con and now they've kind of trickled out a little bit and I see some of the classic Harleys coming back. Um, but yeah, for a while there, it was just like, just the new Harleys. I didn't see any old ones. Oh yeah. So lots of red and black. Maybe a little green. Oh, I used to have this poster. <laughs> I love that picture. Red and black, maybe a little abstract. That's cute. Let me see. What are the Harley Quinn photos that we got? That we got? That we got? Let's see. Um, Harley Quinn. Oh, I got this Harley Quinn. I got a couple Harley Quinns. I got this like cute, classic, almost Renaissance kind of Harley Quinn. Um, but also kind of punk. I don't know. Like old but new. And I want to edit that somehow. And then this. Uh, Genderbend Harley Quinn. I think he's supposed to be like a Harley Quinn uh, goon. Like Joker has his goons, you know? Harley Quinn's got hers. I think he's a Harley Quinn goon. But still, red, black, you know, the duopoly. The yin and the yang. And maybe a little green. These are good. Hmm. Yeah, red. Probably a nice red and black. Something, ooh. Maybe like a, for the classic Harley Quinn, I could do like a red and black with like a fleur de lis print or something. Like a, like she's got like fancy wallpaper behind her. Sometimes I'll just edit it to make it look like we shot in a studio, you know, with like different backdrops. Whenever I do portrait photography indoors, um, people are always like, where's your backdrop? Didn't you bring a backdrop? And I'm like, no, you have white walls, right? Okay, great. We're good. <laughs> They're like, what do you mean? Like, I can make this any color, texture, pattern, whatever you want. It's fine. I don't need to spend a bunch of money on backdrops <laughs> and lug them all around. I've done that before, before I learned how Photoshop worked. <laughs> Not anymore. And if we can just edit it and make it look cool, why pay for big, bulky, heavy rolls that I have to carry around and backdrops and extra tripods and stands and ugh, no thanks. I'll pass. So I'm feeling good on the Harley Quinn. I also got a Spider Gwen and I've never edited a Spider Gwen before. And I'm thinking it's just Spider-Man and pastel, right? That seems to be the vibe. So, Vaporwave, Easter Bunny, girl, girl, Spider-Man, <laughs> Spider-Gwen. Yeah, a lot of pink, a lot of blue. That first one I pulled up, that's fantastic. I like that. I like the color theory, the color story there. So pink and blue, pink and blue. That's good. Oh, here's some actual cosplay. Oh, damn. Wait, is that real? Animated. Huh. Interesting. So, yeah. Pink and blue. A lot of pink and blue. I think I'll definitely do abstract, you know, color movement flowing yeah it's better than art that's pretty okay that's cool 
all right, I'm feeling good. Feeling good about that. And so the next step, after I've been sufficiently inspired for some, like I don't want to do everything at once, right? I don't want to overfill my head and get overwhelmed. So one thing at a time, I'll go back to start with Wolverine or whoever I'm feeling. Like I, I usually like to take a, a handful of characters or whatever and because this is the only time I really get into this like heavy duty making art stuff like photography is art in its own right yeah I had a whole debate and wrote a paper on it in college but like taking a picture is taking a picture and there's more to it than just snapping a button right it's there's there's a lot more to it especially if you're a professional dealing with professional equipment and stuff there's there's math there's <laughs> there's quick math on your feet there's like you have to um, know about uh, grayscale, color theory, color story. Um, you have to know all the how your camera works, f-stop stuff like that. Like even though we don't shoot on film anymore, we still gotta know stuff. And um, I, I just usually will like my meat and potatoes is just portraits, weddings, events, birthday parties, corporate headshots, like if you have an, you know, a team of lawyers or whatever, I'll take their headshots for the website, you know, things like that, um, travel photography, I do everything. If you can point a camera at it and take a picture of it, you can hire me to do that. And uh, concerts, sports, whatever. <laughs> Um, I, last week I did a, a birthday party for an eight-year-old and it was a pool party. It was Star Wars themed. It was awesome. They had inflatable lightsabers that they were beating the crap out of each other with. It was hilarious. Um, they even had a Starfighter inflatable that they could sit in and like there was a water gun attachment. I was jealous because it was clearly for kids. No grown-up could sit in that thing without breaking it, but it looked cool. It was a dope birthday party and I got to take photos of it. So hopefully that little boy appreciates those photos one day when he's all grown up, but so that's what I usually do. I don't get to make art all the time, and so it's just birthday parties, weddings, pets, people, places, meh. It's fun. I love my job. But every once in a while, I get to do cosplay, and it's really just like, I don't go to a bunch of conventions. I do want to go to other conventions. I've gone to Phoenix Comic Con f since 2014. Um, this was my ninth year. I was stoked to go and really excited to go next year for my 10th but I don't think I'll be back because they're banning photographers um, or they already have banned photographers and so I won't be allowed to go back in that capacity and SDCC I've kind of gotten my fill of for right now um, so I don't know if I'll be going back to that next year maybe in the future maybe 2025 for SDCC but um, I'd like to check out Atlanta what is that Dragon Con um, Emerald City Comic Con, which is I, th I think Seattle, right? And uh, I don't think I'll ever make it all the way to New York because why would I go that far for a convention? I don't know. I can drive to San Diego. George is already too damn far, <laughs> but I want to go to Dragon Con because it sounds really cool and people are always talking about it. Um, but that's the only time I get exposure to a bunch of cosplay at once. Like, I have the locals who hire me, who know me from the convention circuits and from the cosplay community, and when they're looking to get fresh photos of their stuff, they'll book me, and that's fine, but it's, you know, few and far between. It's maybe a handful a year that way, and it's all year. And when I go to SDCC or Phoenix or something like that, I, dude, in just one day, Saturday, at SDCC, I got, I think I was, I was counting, and within three hours of being up there on those stairs, I got 30 individual different cosplays, multiple images of each, because I work quickly. So I'll take three shots of you with three different poses within a minute, if you're quick too, you know. Um, but yeah, when I go to conventions, I manage to get a bunch of content, and that way we can sit here and edit and make stuff. And so what I do when I start it's been so long since I've done this I got a little bit of a creative block and so I get inspired look at other people's work s maybe see what I want to do and what I don't want to do and then I'll take a bunch of characters so like I've definitely got 30 at least probably more unique cosplays to edit now so 
I'm definitely more. Probably hell. Probably double that, to be frank. I marked like 72 photos here, and each one is a different character, I think. <laughs> Maybe each two are different characters, but I got like I got Morpheus, I got Batgirl, I got Space Ghost, Batman, Poison Ivy, uh, another Batman from a different era. Uh, I got a Spider Noir. Like everything. Everything. I have Rocketeer. I can't wait to get get down and edit that Rocketeer. I got and Doctor Doom. I got Beetlejuice. I got the angels from from Good Omens. A Crowley and a Xerophil. Come on. I'm so freaking excited to edit all of these. But each one's an individual, and it's so overwhelming. So what I'll do is I'll take a handful of those, like we did today, and I will just names throw them at the wall. Start looking at the at the things that inspire me. Start sifting through some fan art and be like, all right, who's inspiring me the most today? And then we'll go and start doing that. So right now, I'm feeling feeling like I can get going on the Wolverine. I feel like I can get started on that. So I'm gonna start actually trying to composite some some or not composite, but bring together elements. So I'm gonna start looking for the elements hunting, fishing, whatever, gathering those resources. And what I've experimented with lately, love it or hate it, AI, um, a lot of artists and other photographers, uh, there was a poll done recently with like Nationwide of professional photographers. I was involved in it, I guess. I got an email and I clicked a bunch of buttons and said submit. But um, there was a survey recently and a lot of photographers, it's like a 50-50 split. Uh, there's a lot of people are worried about AI and a lot of people aren't and I was I'm I'm one of the people who's like right in the middle uh, at first I was worried because I saw what some people were doing with their photos and I was like oh my job's gone they can do my job now that's cool <laughs> but then I thought wait a minute I could make Photoshop or I could make AI work for me instead of against me so what I started doing just literally in June, so just just over a month ago, right after Phoenix Comic Con when I got all that content off my camera and onto my computer and finally started looking through it and getting to the process of editing, I saw that Adobe, which uh, unfortunately I pay for because you gotta pay for Photoshop, right? I know there's free services, but I love Lightroom and nobody else has a Lightroom. Um, but I saw that Adobe had released their Firefly in beta, so and I have access to that. So it's their, it's their. If you're watching me on Twitch right now, hey TikTok, go to Twitch.tv/BigClickEnergy, and you can see what we're doing today. If you're looking at the screen right now, uh, Adobe released their own AI called Firefly, and so what I did, all my latest releases. If you go to my Instagram, BigClickEnergy1, uh, you all my latest cosplay releases were built with AI sort of, kind of. What I do is I'll go in and try to create like a little bit of a rough draft. I will get the idea in my head into words, describe the thing that I'm seeing, see what AI comes up with, and if I like it enough, I'll download it, save it, and use it as an element. Because I don't want to use it directly and just be like, okay, I'm, now I'm ripping off AI as an artist. I don't want to steal art even from a non-human, right? Because it just doesn't feel right. No art should be stolen. So, But I'll, I'll take it and uh, integrate it into my own art. And that feels okay because Adobe didn't steal artists' art to make their AI. They got consent. Um, even I had to sign a thing that says I consent to this thing looking at my art and using it for training. So that makes me feel a little bit better about using it. But um, So that's what I'm doing. I just get a little rough draft and go from there. I was trying to make something last night around midnight. I got really tired and I was starting to doze off and I was like, I'm going to make some backgrounds. I've had like really long days the past few days and I haven't been able to get to these edits like I want to. And uh, midnight last night was too late to try anything. <laughs> so, but um, yeah, so that's what's going on. Now the next thing we will just think about what I want to see in my art and my in my background and I'll try to make a rough draft of the background and then I'll take it download it and use it either as inspiration for like I might just use it as a reference I may not even use this actual thing in the finished piece 
or I may even just integrate it entirely into the art piece. So either way, it's it's like taking a multi-step process and taking a handful of the steps out of it. It shortens my workload. It, it lightens it a little bit, right? So it just kind of condenses what I have to do. It's pretty cool. I don't mind it. And the more I practice with it, the more I might get, I don't know, I might, I, I might get better with using AI. I know I'm not great at the prompting, but like I have some keywords and things that I try to use and remember. But yeah, I'm working on it. It's just trial and error, figuring things out. But once I have all the elements in place, so for example, here's some old cosplay assets. So once I have a character that I know I definitely want to edit, I will make a folder for that character. Let's say, oh gosh, some of these I deleted. Okay, so I, I just recently edited a Darth Maul, for example, and I have a whole folder for Darth Maul. Twitch, you're looking at this right now. So under the Darth Maul folder, here's something I made with AI. Actually, I was trying to see if AI could do a lightsaber, and that's what AI gave me for a lightsaber, and I was just using it as a reference for the light, the smoke, the the glowing effect, and I created my own without using the AI. But mostly just using it as reference is kind of cool and helpful because, you know, as we were just looking now through the fan art on just like when you Google that character or whatever and you're just looking through it, you can't always find the thing that exactly, you know, like the the angle that maybe you're, you're, you want your character to be at or, or the kind of vibe you want your character to be in. You can't always find that already made because it's your own original idea, right? Nobody else has made it. So it's kind of cool to just start describing that and typing that idea into an, an AI engine like Firefly and getting visual feedback, right? It's, it's fascinating. It's like, oh, shit, you know, I just type this out and there it is sort of like the AI is not perfect it's not it's not perfect yet it's a little janky but you know you can kind of like I call it a rough draft you can get a rough draft and I love it I think it's fascinating <clears throat> so in my Darth Maul folder I just have things like here let me make this a little bit bigger for your twitch so you can see what we're looking at hold on I'm not great with the mouse moving okay so I just have like, I knew I wanted to do something with smoke and light and red and darkness, right? Because that's Sith. That's just, that's Sith. Red, dark, glowy, fiery Sith, right? And so I did, I did take some public domain lightsaber PNGs, again for reference, and overlay. So I'll show you what I made with those elements. So that's what I'll do. Once I get inspired and I know what I want to do, I'll go and I'll either create those elements. A lot of these were created right in Adobe. A lot of these smoke. This, I just typed in red and black smoke. And that's what, you know, it started giving me really cool you know, images of smoke. So once I have all the elements that I want, and I know how I want to composite the piece and put it together, we'll open up Photoshop. We'll take the photo out of Lightroom and send it over to Photoshop and do all that work and then save it back to Lightroom and then export it as its own piece later and then watermark it and publish it. But let me show you what I did with those Darth Maul elements, for example. So once they're all gathered and I'm sufficiently inspired, um, I start editing and then I end up with, I think that's one of my newer ones. Where is it? I just updated my portfolio last night, so everything's topsy-turvy. This, can you see this, Twitch? Here, yeah, there, right there, check it out. That's how it was, sh lightsabers never shoot well. They always look, I don't care how nice your lightsaber is, I have a nice one. They never shoot well, they always look like plastic, because they are plastic. Um, but when you edit them, if you do it right, you can make it look like a real lightsaber. Like it's really a laser. And I have to take these stupid security tags off but there's the before and then there's the after using those those elements that I was talking about and a little of my own photo color tweaking here and there I do sometimes paint over eyes for example like I had a um, Sub-Zero from Mortal Kombat and the cosplayer didn't have blue contacts in obviously he can't make his eyes glow like they're ice <laughs> um, but I made him, I, I edited it to make it look like it was. 
anything like that I'll paint over. Sometimes I'll fix um, when I shoot drag queens. Um, sometimes it's not their first photo shoot of the day or sometimes they've been in drag for six hours or 12 hours or whatever it is and um, their makeup's starting to peel around, you know, just kind of come off around the edges a little bit. So I've had to like replace lipstick or things like that. So I'm no, I'm no uh, stranger to painting, but um, painted this lightsaber. Made that look real, hopefully. But yeah, that's what will happen once I get all my elements and everything organized. I like to be organized. I like to have everything that I might want to work with, open it all up, do one at a time. Because I used to try to, like, having too many pies in the, you know, <laughs> like too many fingers and too many pies or whatever. I would try to, like, I would be working on Darth Maul and Wolverine and Spider-Gwen and something else all at the same time in Photoshop and trying to, like, you know, no, that's not how that works. You just one piece at a time. Once it's done, it's done, and then you can move on to the next one. But that's essentially the process, and that's um, that's what we're doing. So today was about getting inspired and checking out the process, talking about what I'm going to do next. And that's it. And you can see the uh, latest uploads on my website, bigclickphoto.com, uh, bigclickphoto.com slash portfolio, if you want to go straight to the portfolio. And if you want to find me on everything, except I don't have a threads yet because I, I'm always the last one to, to do something cool. Um, I'm always late to the party. I'm on TikTok, Twitch, YouTube, Facebook, the um, Instagram. Uh, I used to be on Twitter, and then that kind of went to crap, didn't it? So I don't like really use my Twitter anymore. Um, I'm even on LinkedIn, and I used to be on Flickr. I'm on everything. But if you want to find me on all the places where I'm active, go to bigclickphoto.com slash links. L-I-N-K-S, and you can find everything. You can find me everywhere. Please give a like, a follow, a share, a sub, a whatever. That reminds me, if you're on Twitch and you have Amazon Prime, you got a free Prime sub. You don't have to use it on me, but um, keep that in mind. The next time you're on Twitch and you want to support your your favorite creator at the, you know, in that moment, give me your, you know, hit that Prime. Hit that Prime button. Prime it. It's pretty handy, and it's free, and it rolls over. It doesn't roll over, so you have to do it every month. It'll run out after a month, and then you can sub to that person again, or you should prime sub on somebody else. It's pretty cool, but you, you get to use it every month. Um, but yeah. Oh, something's happening. I think my door's opening. <gasps> Somebody's breaking and entering. No, it's fine. It's that. It's about that time. Hello. I was just signing off. I'm still alive. Hi. Hi. Don't be too noisy, please. I'm sorry. Is it storming out there? No. Oh, okay. Anyway, that's my cue to exit, you guys. So, I am going to wrap it up. As I was saying, use that Prime sub if you got Amazon. It's free. It's sweet. Use it on me. Use it on somebody else. It doesn't matter. Just have a good time with it. And don't let Bezos keep the money. He's already got too much. Use your Prime sub. Oh my gosh. Use it on somebody else, not Papa Bezos. Um, and if you're on YouTube, follow me. Hit that subscribe button, hit that bell button, hit that bell notification so you can see whenever... I might start going live on YouTube if I can figure that out. I'm pretty old, and I don't know how any of this works, but <laughs> I've learned Streamlabs in a short amount of time, sort of. So we're figuring it out, one day at a time. Also, TikTok, thank you for joining. Um, thanks for hanging out. I don't expect gifts or any of that stuff because we're not doing the gang gang and the whatever that is. We're not doing the NPC stuff. That'd be cool. I probably could. I have cosplay that I could get into and like do stuff, but yeah, we'll just, I just want to promote my business. And so if you tuned in for that, thank you. If you sat here this long, appreciate ya. Um, go to twitch.tv slash energy and you can see me working. You can I'm gonna actually get into some of these edits now, so next time you see me streaming, we might actually be into the thick of it and doing the stuff, doing it for real. So thank you for tuning in, thank you for watching, thank you for uh, following, liking, sharing, all that good stuff. And I will see you next time. Take it easy. Peace.